Animal Farm is first published on this date. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is August 17th, 2023. It is the 229th day of the year. You got 136 days left. It is the 33rd Thursday in the 33rd week and the 58th day of summer. You got 37 days left until fall. Today is National Black Cat Appreciation Day. This special day was created to recognize the unique beauty of black cats, as well as to raise awareness about how often they are overlooked in shelters. Yes, people think they're unlucky. So a lot of them get left behind in shelters when, you know, they could have easily been picked up by someone. And it's too bad. I forget all the ins and outs about it, but uh, I have a friend years and years ago. She worked at a uh, animal shelter and she said that all the time. As soon as they got black cats in, they're like, shh. Never mind. It's not going anywhere. I think she had like four of them at the time. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else August 17th has given us. 1585, the first group of colonists sent by Sir Walter Raleigh under the charge of Ralph Lane lands in the New World to create Roanoke Colony on Roanoke Island, just off the coast of present day North Carolina. <laughs> This course later becomes known as the Lost Colony of Roanoke. So the colonists set up camp here and they build their little community. And eventually John White, who was like the governor of this area at the time, decided to go back to England for more supplies and bring people back with him. That was in 1587. But just as he arrived back in England, a major naval war broke out between England and Spain. And Queen Elizabeth I called on every available ship to confront the mighty Spanish Armada, including his ships. It wasn't till 1590 when White finally returned to Roanoke, where he had left his wife and his daughter and his infant granddaughter, Virginia Dare, the first English-born child in the Americas. He found no trace of the colony or its inhabitants, and few clues to what might have happened to him apart from the single word, Croatan, which was carved into a wood post. Investigations into the fate of the lost colony of Roanoke have continued over the centuries, but no one's ever come up with a solid answer to what happened. Croton was the name of an island south of Roanoke that was home to a Native American tribe of the same name. People believe they were either killed or abducted by the Native Americans. Others believe they tried to sail back because they had a small ship there. They were going to sail back to England themselves, which they may have got lost at sea. The Spaniards were also south of them, mostly in Florida, but they had been marching up the coast. Others believe that they were absorbed into other friendly tribes and just became part of their tribe. Very, very interesting story. 1807, Robert Fulton's North River Steamboat leaves New York City for Albany, New York on the Hudson River, inaugurating the first commercial steamboat service in the world. 1863, the American Civil War. In Charleston, South Carolina, Union batteries and ships bombard Confederate-held Fort Sumter. 1945, the novel Animal Farm by George Orwell is first published. It's one of those books, I think it's mandatory for most people. You got to read it in high school at some point if you're in some kind of English class. That's one of the books I skimmed through in high school and just kind of took the notes. But it wasn't until years later I actually sat down and read it. And that may be one of the only books I read cover to cover in, I want to say it was either one day or a weekend. 1959, Quake Lake is formed by a, the magnitude 7.2, 1959, Hebgen Lake Earthquake near Hebgen Lake in Montana. I hope that's right, Hebgen, Hebgen. 1969, Category 5 Hurricane Camille hits the U.S. Gulf Coast, killing 256 people and causing $1.42 billion in damages. 1998, the Lewinsky scandal. God, has it been that long? U.S. President Bill Clinton admits in tape testimony that he had an improper physical relationship with White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Later that same year, he admits before the nation that he misled people about the relationship. I follow her on Twitter or X or whatever it is now. She is a very smart lady. She's, she's funny and she's very, very intelligent. I obviously don't know her personally, but, uh, you know, she was like the poster child for what they now call doxing. Just everything in your life thrown out into the public and become tabloid fodder. It's commonplace these days. 2008, American swimmer Michael Phelps becomes the first person to win eight gold medals in one Olympic Games. That's amazing. Eight movies released on August 17th. 
1979 Monty Python's Life of Brian. Okay, I'm gonna wind this video down here pretty quick because it is like 102 degrees here in the Portland metro area and there's no air conditioning in my office right now. So I'm sweating. So we're gonna wind this down pretty quick. Anyway, Life of Brian's an amazing Monty Python movie about a guy who lives during the time of Jesus and people keep mistaking him for the Messiah when actually it's Jesus uh, just or the prophet, whatever you wanna call it. Interesting fact about this movie, because of its subject matter, they were having a hard time getting it funded. Uh, George Harrison read the script and he decided to help them fund it. Later on, they're all, one of them asked him at a thing, he's all, why'd you uh, help us out with this movie? Why'd you invest? And he said, well, I read the script and I wanted to see the film. <laughs> That's his only motivation. He wanted to see the movie. Born on August 17th, 1943, Robert De Niro, legendary actor who won the Academy Award for Best Actor for his role as Jake LaMotta in the 1980 boxing film Raging Bull. Great movie. Uh, you kind of got to be an art house type of fan because it's not laid out like a normal movie. It's very interesting, though. Died on August 17th, 1920, Ray Chapman, Major League Baseball shortstop for Cleveland, who became the first player to die from being hit with a pitch. Yes, he was born in Beaver Dam, Kentucky and began playing with the Cleveland Naps in 1912. He was killed by a pitch to the head, which led to the introduction of batting helmets and the banning of spitballs in Major League Baseball. The guy who threw the pitch was Yankees pitcher Carl Mays. Now, if you don't know what a spitball is, I'm not totally sure, but I know it's if you put some form of substance on the ball to create more spin to it or things like that, make the ball move more. They used to use Vaseline, wet it down with your thumb, you know, put water on it. That Because the ball's spinning so fast, any kind of little friction can really adjust how it's moving. If there's any big pitching fans, let me know in the comment section below. I'm just a big fan of the knuckleball, which has no spin whatsoever, so you never know where it's gonna go, not even the pitcher. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out. Have a great day, stay cool, and be nice to each other.